Welcome fellow recovering traditionalists to episode 174, helping students understand magnitude of numbers, part of our rounding numbers series. Welcome to Build Math Minds, the podcast, where fidelity to your students is greater than fidelity to your textbook. I'm your host, Christina Tonnevold, the recovering traditionalist and buildmathminds.com founder, where my mission is to change the way we teach elementary math to our kiddos. So are you ready to start building math minds and not just creating calculators? Let's get started. I got a question sent in to me, and because it deserves more than a short answer, I'm doing three episodes to answer it. Here is what was sent in. Some of my kiddos have trouble telling me which tens a number is between. For example, I'll give them 53 and ask them to round it, but they can't say it's between either 50 or 60. This is actually very common, and it's rooted in the fact that kids are seeing numbers in isolation and they haven't built relationships around numbers. We can't just jump into rounding if students haven't spent time exploring numbers and how they relate to each other because that's all that rounding really is. And that's at the heart of her question is when they're rounding, they can't tell what two numbers the number is between. So rounding is typically taught as a place value concept where you teach kids that procedure of looking at the digit in the specified place. But as I discussed in the lapis last episode, as recovering traditionalists, we instead should be helping students build their number sense. And when students have number sense, they naturally see what numbers are closest to it for rounding. Now, last week I gave you my first tip for helping your students with rounding, and that was to do lots and lots of work with number lines and number paths. If you missed that episode, go back and listen to it. It was number 173. Now, my second tip for helping your students with rounding and being able to know what numbers a specific number is close to is to do lots of work helping them understand the magnitude of a number. Now, technically, the magnitude of a number is that number's distance to zero. However, we use that understanding to basically compare numbers. It's basically the property of numbers that we use when ordering or ranking numbers. Anytime you are doing activities where students are comparing quantities, you are helping them work on understanding the magnitude of numbers. Having students place numbers on number lines helps solidify the idea that we are looking at how far away a number is from zero and that the further away it is, the larger its magnitude. So that's why my first tip was to have students get comfortable with using number lines and placing numbers on a number line because then they can use that visual of numbers on the number line to help them do any activity that asks them to compare numbers. One of my favorite activities is a routine called close, far, in between. It not only focuses on magnitude, but also estimation and reasoning. Close, far, in between first appeared in the book Mathematics Their Way by Mary Barada Lorton. And I just love it for all the different types of questions that you can ask students beyond the typical, which amount is greater when you're comparing numbers. Inside the Build Math Minds PD site, we have a document with over 120 pre-made close far in between routines, but I'm going to show you a, an example from that document to help you out. Now, for those of you who are listening and not watching, all that's on screen is just three circles with three different numbers inside of each circle. So all you have to do for the routine is have three quantities. And in this example, we have 464, 319, and 557. This routine isn't about having the students put them in order. Typically during the routine, you just ask simple questions like, which of these numbers are closest to each other? Which number is in between the other two numbers? Which two numbers are the farthest away from each other? And those three questions are fabulous questions that will help your students estimate, reason, and build their understanding of the magnitude of numbers. But if you'd like, you can extend this into even more areas. Here's a screenshot of the notes that go with the slides inside of the routine that we created for our Build Math Minds members of just some of the questions you could ask. There's things like, 
which two are the closest and why, which is closest to blank. And so depending upon the number sets, right, you could ask which one's closest to 500 in this case in, with these examples. Um, and then you ask, of course, how do you know? Uh, name a number or a multiple of, you could be specific and say name a multiple of five that's between blank and blank. You pick any two of your numbers. Uh, name a number that is more or less than all of these. Which two numbers are the furthest apart? We, we talked about that one. And then there's all kind, like basically any, <laughs> any kind of question around three numbers you can ask using this routine. I know that this routine isn't actually doing rounding though, but remember, we are focusing on helping students build a sense of numbers and how numbers relate to each other. Rounding is all about knowing what quote unquote friendly numbers a number is close to. And when students are doing this routine, you will hear them often comparing the numbers given to those kind of friendly numbers. You will hear things like, 557, that's close to 550, so, you know, the rest of their thinking. Plus, I highly suggest having students visualize these numbers on a number line or even draw out the number line and placing these numbers on a number line because the more work they have with number lines, the better, as we talked about in the previous episode. Now, if you're a member of the Build Math Minds PD site, you do have access to this close, far, in-between document. We are sending a link to it in the email that goes along with this episode. Um, but there's also so much more inside of the site to help you build these ideas with your students. If you aren't a member, come on over to buildmathminds.com BMM to join. Now this routine isn't just for whole numbers or even multi-digit numbers. We should be doing it with young students like this example in our document that is showing finger patterns instead of numerals. We should also be doing this as students are working on operations and as they move into decimals and fractions. And as I said before, the document we have for our Build Math Minds PD site members has over 120 pre-made slides that are for all ages, and you can easily swap out numbers to use the slides over and over again with different numbers inside of those circles so that you get lots and lots of practice with the kids doing close far in between. If you aren't a member tomorrow, just put up three quantities onto the board and start asking questions that dig into what is close, far, and in between. Now, I hope that this helped you build your math mind so that you can build the math minds of your students. I'll see you next week.